Well, you know, this is such an important point because, uh, you know, for example, we hear people idealizing. We hear what I would describe, my words, as milk toast Democrats idealizing the deal making that took place between Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill. But what they don't talk about is that Tip O'Neill was he was kind of a firebrand rhetorically himself. You know, you could sit down and cut a deal once you've made it clear where you stand and once you've told the voters where you stand. And it's also just a losing proposition electorally. You can't beat a Republican by being one. And it's a disgrace to the voters to have to choose between what amounts to uh, two right-wing conservative candidates, one uh, Republican and another one a Democrat in name only. Well, and since you've uh, helped me understand the psychology behind some of the Republican behavior, maybe you can help me here, because I've speculated about this a lot, but but is it, uh, you're much closer to it, is it a kind of people-pleasing psychology? Is it fear of confrontation? Is, is it ideological that they really stand more to the center than the public opinion? And uh, it, it, Why do you think so few Democrats are willing to stand up and really uh, take them on on these issues? Well, one of it is the power of money, and dirty money, corporate money, uh, money from lobbyists, uh, greedy money money that wants something in return for a campaign contribution. This is an odd thing, but it's true. Uh, of the 435 members of Congress uh, who ran for election and won in 2012, 435 of us, there was only one who got most of his money from small donors. Can you guess who that was? Uh, I can probably guess, but I'll, I'll let you tell us. It was me. Ah. Uh, yeah. Every other yeah. Democrat, as well as every Republican, according to their FEC reports, uh, got most of their contributions from donors who who've contributed $200 or more. I was the only one out of all of us who got most of his contributions from small donors. So the, the, the money problem, the greed problem, uh, the dirty money problem, is now pervasive in both parties. <clears throat> if you spend uh, half or of each day or two-thirds of each day calling up rich people and big corporations and asking for money, which is what many Democrats do, uh, then that's bound to have some effect on the work that you do the rest of the time when you're pretending to be a congressman or some other elected official. And it, it's, a, it's a real problem. We don't really have government of the people, by the people, and for the people when it's being entirely underwritten. At least people's campaigns are being entirely underwritten by millionaires and billionaires and giant multinational corporations. So that's the fundamental problem that we have Every elected official in America today has a conflict of interest, a conflict of interest between his constituents and his donors. Hmm. So, uh, you, you know, this is one of those issues where, uh, of course, I couldn't agree with you more, and yet uh, somehow uh, we have to depend on the very officials who are trapped in this conflict of interest or, or participating in this conflict of interest, depending on who they are, to change it, which situation. So, you know, how do we get a democracy back uh, uh, in circumstances like that? Well, at the state level, people have to take the initiative through initiatives and through referenda, and they have to provide for public financing of campaigns. Uh, it's the only way to reduce, if not eliminate, the conflict of interest that exists. And, and it makes a huge difference. I mean, <clears throat> the reason why I can be so productive in my office is because, thanks to our 100,000 donors who go to the website congressmanwithguts.com and make a, a 25 or $50 contribution from time to time. I have time to do my work. <clears throat> that makes a, a huge difference. So the, the public needs to elect candidates who clearly demonstrate that they can do useful things for the public, not for the lobbyists, not for the corporations, but rather for the public, like we've been doing and like some others have been doing, regardless of where they get their money from. Uh, just because uh, you're, you're paid for it doesn't necessarily mean you're bought. Uh, so, there, you know, there's plenty of other good progressives. I'm not the only one. Secondly, we do need to take steps uh, through exercise of the public will to try to minimize the effect of money in politics, and in particular, corporate money in politics. <clears throat> the right wing sometimes whines about labor money uh, in politics. But I'll tell you that when a corporate lobbyist walks into my office, they want always... That, that lobbyist wants something for his corporation. Uh, when a labor lobbyist walks into my office, uh, he or she almost always wants something that's good for everybody, like an increase in the minimum wage. You know, there's not many union members who make the minimum wage, 
But notwithstanding that, labor leaders are the strongest proponents in the country right now of an increase in the minimum wage. Well, probably because they understand the economic studies that say that when you increase the minimum wage, there's a lift effect for people several dollars above it as well. Well, not only that, they realize that the fundamental problem that we have right now in the country, and this has been true since at least 2008, is a lack of aggregate demand. We have a right. uh, $15 trillion economy in terms of the goods and services we can produce and only $14 trillion of demand. Why? Because a trillion dollars or more leaks out through Wall Street, uh, through, uh, through bad trade policies, and, and so on. And the government does its best to try to make that up through the, tra- through the federal deficit, make up the trade deficit, uh, the, the lack of lending by Wall Street banks, and so on. Uh, the leaks in the economy. They try, we, we, we do our best at the federal level with the, gar- with the Republicans constantly trying to hogtie us to make up for that deficit. But the real problem in America today is that the people who have money aren't spending the money. They're making the money, but they're not spending the money. And the result of that is constantly, constantly, constantly a shortfall in demand that would be met with, with that much and more by an increase in the minimum wage and other policies that put more money in the hands of people who will spend it and less money in the hands of people who will hoard it. So we have a uh, we have a kind of catch twenty two situation now. We've got to count on uh, selecting in the primary process. I would assume candidates who are willing for state and federal office who are willing to buck their own system enough to put new rules in place at the same time as we're uh, you know pushing the kinds of uh, lobbying efforts that lead to things like a minimum wage or other other economic measures that are good for a majority of people. 